All right, graduated and back in New York, and that means we're gonna start working towards the Series 65. But that doesn't mean we can't take in new clients. We have five clients right now for over 1.6 million. And we can take up to five New York State clients and no limits for out of New York State clients. But you have to have at least a $2 million net worth. So if you're getting value from these videos and enjoying what I have to say, and you think I've been right the whole way or a lot of the way, and want to continue on that trend and have me manage your portfolio for you, where you can see all the stocks, see how they're doing day to day, log in anytime, and ask me questions anytime, feel free to send me a DM, text, or however you want to communicate, and we'll get talking, see if this is the right fit, and go from there. Regardless, how is the market doing today? It was a pretty aggressive sell off, and what are you seeing? Well, yesterday we talked about a possible continuation of the tech sell off. That wouldn't surprise us at all. And we'd expect some rise in interest rates and wanted to adjust for that and possibly getting a little short Tesla as a hedge for that move. Now, we saw Bitcoin pull back dramatically. And, uh, you know, the federal government's been pretty quiet on Bitcoin. We saw Bitcoin pull back on China, really, you know, coming down on it, giving it a warning, not laying down the law in any significant way besides, you know, doing something with Hong Kong banks, whatever not preventing Chinese people or restricting them any more than they are currently already restricted. Unclear to me how exactly they are restricted. I heard something that they can hold Bitcoin. I was under the impression the Chinese can't hold Bitcoin. So, you know, I guess I gotta look more into that particular rule. But China, very vocal about being against Bitcoin. The US government is not so much, but I think the US government has other ways of indirectly impacting Bitcoin. And that has to do with, for example, taxing Bitcoin. If you make money on Bitcoin, you're getting taxed. How can you possibly have a currency if you're gonna get taxed on a purchase, right? It's not fair, it doesn't work that way. So that's one disincentive. But what's relevant to today's market and the future trend we're gonna see is the rise in interest rates. What does the rise in interest rates do? It increases the demand for dollars. What does the increase in demand for dollars do? It counteracts the demand for Bitcoin. So by taxing Bitcoin and by in increasing interest rates, which hasn't happened yet, we're gonna talk about that in a second, the United States can combat Bitcoin without actually saying anything about combating Bitcoin. They can just strongly disincentivize it and somehow prop up the US dollar because you, know, you can only pay your taxes in the US dollar still is the medium of exchange of choice for the majority, vast majority of people, except cyber criminals and uh, Ethereum people. And, you know, I bought a sports card with my friend on Bitcoin because he's very bullish on it. So rise in interest rates, that doesn't seem to be happening yet. Well, the Fed is starting to sound like they are going in the direction of the economy becoming stronger. And because the economy becomes stronger, we can engage in tightening policy. Now, that's not happening right now. It's not happening. We don't know when it's going to happen. When it happens is still uncertain. But the bond market, nothing has changed in the Fed stance in the past several months. This has been the stance of the Fed, really hasn't moved at all. Yet the bond market has seemed to rally from where it was in August. It was very flat for a very long time. It's very much up in interest rates since then on a percentage basis. And I know that's not the most important thing. Current yield is the most important thing. But I don't know if real yields below zero, and that's where we're at right now. We are at real yields below zero is a sustainable number. So I expect the bond market to continue adjusting. I expect inflation to continue to pick up. And it is possible it's transitory. I'm not taking that, that possibility off the table. I'm just saying I'm not convinced. I am not convinced by the Fed saying it. I'm not convinced by the people who believe it, of which I know very smart people who believe that's the case. Tom Lee believes this is the case, at least for now. Um, he has posed the question and leaned in the uh, transitory um, side of things. And it's possible that's true. Um, that is the situation as of now. We are seeing inflation occur and it is possible that when interest rates rise, and we expect that in a year or two, and that would remain in the transitory period, that the inflation rate falls. That's possible. The question is, 
has too much damage been done? Will wage increases, which have happened and are likely to continue to happen, ensure that inflation remains at a relatively high rate? These are the unknowns, and we're really gonna have to see what happens in these regards. Um, I'm not convinced that the transitory nature of inflation is the true nature of inflation, but we'll see. Um, regardless, rates are likely to tick up, and if rates tick up, that's gonna affect tech stocks. So I'm not anti-tech stocks. I just encourage you to monitor that. And as we've been saying for a very long time now, look at the positions you have, right? It's a very expensive position, trading at a crazy valuation. There's a good chance it's already pulled back, but if it has it and it is still at a crazy valuation, it's likely to keep selling. So take the loss or take the gain, ring the register on that position. Now, if it's a position you like structurally, structurally, fundamentally long-term, it's got some incredibly valuable technology. For example, CRISPR, genetic engineering technology, that has the potential to five or 10 X in value over the next several years, hold it, but expect to ride waves. That is the type of investment that is high risk, high reward. And you're gonna see both sides of that coin. I've talked about this story multiple times. I bought CRISPR therapeutics in 2017 around $18 a share. That ended up being a 150 plus dollar stock over the summer. But I had to ride many up 50%, down 50% waves on that. And I held it through. So I encourage you to do the same thing if that is the case. You know, Make sure you're buying something that you truly believe and with money that you think you can ride a wave down with. You know, Don't put all your eggs in one basket. That is pretty typical. Um, and uh, you should be all right. I would then encourage you to take a look at energy and look for days like today when there's a significant pullback off of who, who knows what, you know, a little more COVID in South Asia. Yeah, that's, that is that is unfortunate and that will certainly have some impact on oil demand, but we're expecting India to come back online. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, regardless, supply has been cut, inflation is incurring, and we don't expect supply to come back online. In addition, there's going to be a lot of U.S. infrastructure building, and that will certainly increase energy consumption. So there's a lot of forces out there, fundamental forces that should continue to drive up the price of oil, given that no part of the world except maybe China is back to total pre-pandemic levels. Energy prices should pick up as the global recovery occurs, and uh, we're entering the summer, and that's when it occurs. So... We'll see what happens. And until next time, peace out.